We recently had some turf guard seminars. This is the content of what that meeting consisted of. The turf guard wireless soil monitoring system has several uses. Sensors can be used on turf grass and potted plants, topiaries, and many different industries. Primarily, we're using it in the golf, but we do have it in some botanical gardens, some spray fields, and some other areas. What people are monitoring is soil moisture, salinity, temperatures, and then following the trends for each of them. It's a great tool to help save money and reduce labor. It's a little different tool than a weather station. We get several requests or comments of, oh, I don't need a weather station. Well, that's not necessarily a case, but it does help you develop a full ETO model. An ETO model is going to consist of solar radiation and duration, temperature, wind, stomatal resistance, water availability, and soil characteristics. Where a weather station cannot help you is to model resistance and water availability and soil characteristics. So for those two unique aspects, this turf guard fills a really nice niche. The ways you can view the information, there's three different ways. One is site vision, which can be a standalone piece of software. Doesn't have to be. But uh, in areas where there is no internet, we can use Site Vision as a standalone uh, database. Golf Vision, which is the first piece of software that they came out to use with Turf Guard, so it's about four years old now, um, and that is only over the internet. So you have to have internet, but wherever you have internet access, you have access to your sensors. The third way is through the Lynx control system. This is the integrated approach where it can tie into your sprinkler heads, your controllers, and the operation of your system. Turf Guard is very simple to use. When we set it up, the map is in there. We just find your course or your piece of property. We can locate the sensors to give you a visual picture of where they are. After they're in, you can just mouse click over the sensor. It'll bring up the readings. Click on the sensor and it'll take you right to the graphs and uh, the tracking information. Uh, you can very easily set thresholds. When the threshold is achieved, this illustration here is an alert. So it's going to change the color to red to let you know that something on that sensor is outside of the threshold that you set. Thresholds are very simple to set. There's just these little slider bars and you can pick moisture, temperature, salinity thresholds on the upper side and the lower side for each. Uses are trending, allowing you to anticipate where things are heading rather than wait till after the event to uh, see that it was too late to do something. For salts, see the buildup in the soil and then know when to remove and flush them. Know when your flushing is, uh, is actually done its job. You can see the greens that are retaining water, perhaps see the greens that dry out faster or slower than other greens in relation. Overall, it allows you to realize the full impact of weather events, such as wind, rain, heat stress, and drought stress, and see how they impact the soil and the root zone underneath the surface. See when the crew members are overwatering or underwatering with hand irrigation or syringing, to know if your syringing program is effective and doing what you intended to be doing. And then using the data and the reports to generate or justify maintenance practices or, or generate pieces of evidence. The Link Central Control with integrated turf guard sensors is, is integrated. From the main screen on through, with the click of a mouse, you can access any sensor from the data or from the map, uh, you can see that same dashboard to look at an overall level. You can drill into any sensor you want. And again, you can have those sensors intimately tied to one sprinkler head, or if there's like areas, you can tie them to several areas. Here's just a little screen capture of the watering plan. And if you'd notice over here on the right, there's turf guard is a column and you can see up arrows and down arrows. That's telling you when you've actually gone above or below the threshold that's set by you. 
so that you're not just haphazardly missing something. If the turf guard's dialed in for you, it's going to tell you if maybe you should have watered or should consider watering, or maybe you were going to water and it's saying, well, no, the moisture level from this threshold that you gave me says I really don't need to. Soil temperature trends, day over day temperature data analysis. It's hour by hour graphing. The graph uh, resolution is actually in five minute intervals. So it'll allow you then to go in and, and stack those days up so that you can see how things are progressing. So example here is five days and just looking at how things move through for the past four days, it's gonna give you a trending idea of how it's gonna to go today. Soil salinity, the same type of trending is available with that. And the same thing with moisture. So you can see the water status before and after an irrigation event so that you know uh, what happened, how deep did the water get. The, there's upper sensors and there's lower sensors in each one of these. The chronological graphing of these data charts is just a great tool to help you analyze what the effects were of fertilizer, pesticides, irrigation over time. You can also add notes as reminders to explain what happened during the event. And that's a very simple click, type in what you want and it assigns it right there. So the next time you're looking at that day of the graph, you just click on the note and it pops right up. The system installation is very simple. There's a base station that connects to Toro via the internet. It doesn't need to be in the maintenance office. It could be in the clubhouse. It could be in a IT closet. If we're using the standalone software, then it needs to be near the computer that's going to house that standalone software. The base station then talks to repeaters. Repeaters can be either internal or external repeaters, meaning internals inside of something, external is a weatherproof box like you see in the picture here. They have a range between 2,000 feet to up to two miles if there's clear line of sight between the repeaters and the central. They take a very low power requirement. And then the repeaters talk to the sensors, the sensors that are actually making the measurements and the readings. That's a 500 foot maximum from the sensors to the repeater. That is all wireless. Speaking about those repeaters, the top picture illustrates an internal repeater that Toro can utilize in the Network VP, the eOSMAC, also in the LTC Plus control platforms. The external repeater, shown in the lower picture on a competitor's controller box, can be mounted outside and anywhere that we can get 120 volt power. Here's an example of a residential commercial controller on a clubhouse hooked up with an external repeater. And the little arrow is pointing to the um, turf guard power supply that can be used to very easily hook into any 110 volt supply and give us the power that we need. If there isn't anything to hook to, the repeaters can be hooked up in a, to a small solar charger battery and circuit. Uh, here's an example of one where a club members made a nice little box to house the battery and the repeater and the 10 watt solar panels just mounted right on the wood. The sensors themselves are very easy to install and very simple to operate. There's an up arrow indicating that that's the direction that it should be mounted in when it's installed. There's a sensor ID on it. That ID is what we'll use back in the software to know which sensor we're actually talking to and then we'll go and we'll name it something a little more user friendly. The installation, if we're talking turf, would be to take a uh, greens cutter, cut about an eight inch deep hole, and then place the sensor in the hole, push it into the side, uh, make sure those probes are pushed right into the, the native soil, and then uh, use the remains of the, what we pulled out from the cup to uh, fill in the rest of the sensor. One thing that you would want to do is the back of the sensor, the flat part of the sensor, should be aimed toward the repeater because as the illustration here shows, you see a red arrow pointing, that's the actual antenna inside that sensor. It's going to have the best reception if its flat face is pointing towards the repeater. 
Then once it's all installed, you'll get readings in about 24 hours. You'll get the most accurate readings in about 14 days once the soils have really knit in and settled in around those probes. The installation for potted materials and plants we've done where we poke it through the plant pot and also where we've put it in the pot, and topiaries and such and so forth. So where there's a will, there's a way. We can usually come up with a way of getting that sensor inside a representative soil sample for the material we're trying to watch. How do you find them? Well, we've used marking whiskers and they work very well, different colors, so that driving by on a golf cart, you can spot where the sensor is. We've had folks use a dot of paint, measure between two heads or other landmarks, use a metal detector. Uh, any of these ways are certainly good ways to find them. As far as affordability, you really only need a base station, a couple sensors, if everything's within 500 feet of each other. Internal or external repeaters can be added over time as needed. The battery life on these, it is a, a, a two-way radio in that that's um, got its own battery, sends a reading every five minutes. That battery is going to last three or more years. Eventually, we'll need to replace that battery. You're looking at an investment of less than $75. You remove the, the six screws, separate the battery from the sensor, snip the wires, replace it with the new wires and the battery, and reassemble it. Activate the sensor and you're on your way. So that is just a quick overview of what we discussed at the meeting. Hopefully you found it helpful. I'm Mike Hartley. I work at Turf Equipment and Supply. So thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the future.